Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about potential Hurricane Nicholas dropping catastrophic flooding over the Texas Gulf Coast regions of upwards to 30 plus inches of rainfall over the next several days. So if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. This is your overall satellite picture for this afternoon on September the 12th. And I've been trying to warn you guys for over the last several days about this potential event. And everything is coming to fruition in a big way with Tropical Storm Nicholas officially becoming a storm this afternoon. And a lot of indications are this is going to bring catastrophic flooding to the Texas Gulf Coast regions. Here is the latest satellite picture. It looks pretty uh ominous right now i mean it's really trying to get its act together it's already spreading the outer bands into the texas gulf coast regions with these cold cloud tops it's got a lot of warm water to work with and it still has another day or two over water so this is expected to become a strong tropical storm or a minimal hurricane over the next uh, several days before it makes landfall sometime on tuesday morning so let's go over the details Here's the latest update from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, the latest advisory, it was moving at one o'clock this afternoon. It was moving north-northwest at 15 miles an hour. It is currently a 40 mile per hour tropical storm way down here south in the Bay of Campeche. It's expected to move northward over the coming days, but check out its slow progression. And that is gonna be the main reason why this is gonna bring some very heavy rain, if not catastrophic flooding to much of Texas here. This is where it's at by Monday, and it really doesn't move very far on Tuesday. And a lot of indications are with the latest update, as it continues moving inshore onto land, it almost stalls or really slows down to a crawl. And that's when it gets really serious, guys, because look where it's at by Friday. I mean, you're talking over four days. It really does not move much of anywhere along the Texas coast, taking advantage of that warm tropical moisture. So we could be looking at, at a serious flood threat for the state of Texas and along the Gulf Coast regions. So let's take a look at the overall parameters. Here's the storm surge from this uh, potential system. We're looking at anywhere from two to four foot storm surge. Right now it's categorized as a possibly impacting up to a 65 mile per hour tropical storm. Some indications are it could get to a minimal tropical storm as shear is expected to relax from this system. So looking forward, we could be looking at tropical storm force conditions as early as Monday morning into Brownsville area. So that's not that far away. And as we get into the afternoon hours on Monday evening, we could be looking at tropical storm force conditions into Houston and the Galveston area, and then eventually into possibly central Texas by the time we get into Tuesday. But that's where it's going to stop because it's going to it's going to be impacting from this ridge to the north. It's only going to be able to travel so far north where it's going to be able to put the brakes on. And that's where it gets really dangerous, guys, as we're talking about a formidable storm literally just sits there and spins over days with low steering currents and dro drops very heavy rain. We're talking two, three, four, up to five inch per hour rainfall potential in some of these areas. So we could be looking at some serious flash flooding with this particular event along the Texas Gulf Coast. This is what the area has got to work with. I mean, check out the sea surface temperature. This is what's got me really concerned as this continues lifting up north, northwest. There's the sea surface temperatures from Grace. You can actually see the upwelling it provided and actually helped lower some of those sea surface temperatures as it moved into Veracruz a couple of weeks ago. And then we had Ida move into Louisiana and had all those devastating impacts there, but you can definitely see it took it, it took its toll on some of these water temperatures down here. But that's not the area of concern. What's what's concerning is is Nicholas has this 
open trajectory of these untapped waters that it's going to be traversing over over the next couple of days. And this is some of the hottest temperatures it's going to be able to work with in the Gulf of Mexico, if not the entire Atlantic. And that is definitely concerning is you're talking about going into a lower shear environment and a lot of extremely warm uh, water temperature, temperatures to work with. So you're going to have plenty of juice to be able to pump into a slowing tropical system approaching land. And so once it gets land, then it's going to hit impact a ridge to the north. And that's what it's going to put on the brakes of this system and drop it to a halt. And that's where it gets really dangerous as we got a pumping Gulf moisture to the south and we got a ridge to the north stopping it in its tracks. And that's when it can get really serious, dumping two, three, four, five inch rainfall amounts in a short amount of time. And we could be looking at a serious flood threat coming up for the Texas Gulf Coast regions over basically a Monday through Thursday time frame. So this is definitely a, a concerning situation. Check out the shear. Right now, it's in the Bay of Campeche. This shear is actually expected to move out. So it's going into a favorable environment as it's approaching land. So this is not a good situation that is coming up against with this developing system over the coming days. Check out the latest ensemble member guidance. This is all coming together, guys, as it's really starting to slow moving. It's now a storm. It's continuing moving north-northwest. It's supposed to impact land by the time Tuesday morning rolls around. And a lot of the European and, and GFS ensemble members guidance basically have it not only hitting land, but slowing down. If not, the, the, the latest model update has actually even got worse because it actually puts the center over land instead of maybe over the open water. So now it's over land, but close enough to water. So it's still feeding and pumping the system and taking advantage and stopping the ridge. And the ridge actually to the north is actually helping to amplify this system and keeping it strong but man, this is not a good situation that we have to work with. And a lot of the dynamics are coming together for a big event for South Texas and the latest European model. This is very concerning, guys. I mean, the last update was very concerning, but every update just continues to get worse and worse and worse with a slowing system. You can only imagine what this continues to unfold over a four day time span. Check out the purple that's hitting more or less South Texas into Corpus, into the Houston area, into Victoria, into maybe the Lagrange area. We're talking double digit 30 plus inches, 40 inches, up towards the 50 inches. I mean, Lagrange is showing right now 50 inches of rainfall <laughs> that is just some serious stuff i mean this actually maxes out at 61. this gets scary i mean i hope this does not come to fruition i hope this is not another harvey type of event but this has got a lot of makings i mean this is a slow moving system we're in the heart of hurricane season We've got a four day event. We've got a lot of dynamics, dynamics are coming together and we're talking of crawling system that's gonna pump two to five inch rainfall rates per hour over an extended period of time. This could get really nasty in a big way. And I don't want to see this unfold, but it's very concerning that I'm let, let, literally seeing this, watching unfold and the model data. And this is what I was trying to get across a couple of days. I mean, this is, has a lot of potential, guys. And this, this latest update, I mean, has me deeply concerned of a very major event coming for South Texas. I mean, I don't need to remind you. This is what, I mean, I grew up in Houston. <laughs> I mean, this is some serious situation. This is what happened in Tropical Storm Allison when it dumped 30 inches of rainfall. This is what 30 inches of rainfall looks like over Houston. I mean, this is a freeway. This is a Highway 45, almost up to the signs. I mean, look at the exit sign. This is what 30 inches of rainfall does to a major city. Okay, so this is the potential that we have on the table, potentially somewhere along Corpus, 
the Victoria to Houston to Lake Charles, that whole area will be under the gun for a potential historic catastrophic type of event. I mean, I don't want I don't want to overplay this whatsoever, but this has a lot of potential to be a very serious situation in a big way that's unfolding for the Texas region. So let's look at the wind swath. I mean, here's the latest update from the GFS model. A lot of indication the National Hurricane Center has this going up to a formidable tropical storm of 65 miles an hour. The latest GFS run has it possibly going up to a minimal hurricane, which is definitely not out of the question. I showed you the warm waters. I showed you the low, low uh, sh uh, shear into the Gulf. So all those dynamics are coming together. It could be a minimal hurricane. But that's not the main impact. Yes, it could be some high winds, but we're talking about catastrophic flooding. That is the main situation that could be unfolding uh, from this particular event from Nicholas. Here's the, here's the latest hurricane model. Uh, man, the same thing. I mean, it has it going up to a minimal hurricane up to 76 miles an hour as it's approaching land sometime on Tuesday morning. So a lot of indications are showing, hey, this could be not only a flooded threat, but could be a little bit of a higher, higher wind threat from this system as it's moving ashore uh, somewhere along uh, the Texas Gulf Coast region, potentially between Corpus and Victoria is what it looks like right now. But don't be so concerned on where the actual center comes ashore because this is a widespread event and a lot of it's right front front quadrant loaded. And the main system after is going to be basically after it makes landfall because it's going to slow down to a crawl. And it's literally going to sit and it literally could be able to basically rain itself out over a four to five day time span. So that is the concern with this system. Here's the latest model guidance of all the models. Unfortunately, it actually takes it further inland. So this actually takes it more over land. So it puts the heavy or heavier amounts over land now instead of over the water. So that's the latest update. That's not a good trend that we're seeing. And we're only about 36 hours away from landfall. So this is not a good indicator. It would put the heaviest impacts over land now instead of the water. Here's the latest guidance, intensity guidance. Yes, some of the members have it approaching possible hurricane strength is not out of the question. Here's the latest update as far as the intensity of the rainfall. Look at the blue and look at the much, the amount of the blue. We're talking deep tropical moisture, warm waters, low shear coming ashore with a, uh, with a wind. And man, we could be looking at two, three, almost to four, four and a half inches. This is four and a half inch per hour rainfall potential. And Harvey, it got up to seven, okay? So this can bring some very serious flooding in a short amount of time over the region. So definitely be, be aware of the system. I will let you know if there's evacuations needed in the area. Please stay, stay tuned with the latest update. I appreciate you guys watching. Do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.